Pursuant to House Resolution 590, the gentleman from Colorado, Mr. Lamborn, and a member opposed, each will control five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Colorado. Mr. Chairman, my amendment is very simple. The United States should not be spending money to disarm ourselves to dramatically cut our strategic nuclear deterrent under the New START Treaty if the other party to the treaty is not trustworthy. At the moment, the Russian Federation is clearly not trustworthy. Let me remind us all of Russia's current record on observing treaties and agreements. In 1994, Russia, Ukraine, the United Kingdom, and the United States signed the Budapest Mem Memorandum. This agreement included a commitment to, quote, respect the independence and sovereignty and the existing borders of Ukraine, unquote. But this agreement did not keep Putin from invading Ukrainian territory. Strike one. In January, the New York Times revealed that the Russian Federation was cheating on another treaty, the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, or INF Treaty. According to the story, our State Department has been raising the INF cheating issue with the Russians for about a year now with no response. Strike two. In 2007, President Putin announced that he was suspending Russian participation in the Conventional Forces in Europe Treaty, or CFE. This came after years of vi Russian violations of the CFE Treaty. Strike three. Is the Russian government trustworthy? The answer is clearly no. The question for us tonight under my amendment is whether it makes sense for us to spend money on reducing our nuclear deterrent when the other party to the New START Treaty is not trustworthy. If you trust Vladimir Putin and the Russian government, then vote against this amendment. But if you, like me, don't want to put our national security in the hands of a serial treaty violator, please vote for this amendment. We should not be spending money in implementing the New START Treaty, which reduces our nuclear forces, unless and until Russia makes it clear that they are a responsible actor and will abide by the agreements they make. Mr. Chairman, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from Colorado reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington seek recognition? Uh, to claim the time in opposition. The gentleman from Washington is recognized for five minutes. Um, I yield myself uh, two minutes. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Thank you. First of all, I mean, the, on the trust issue, um, you wouldn't have to negotiate with people that you trust. And unfortunately, regrettably, we have to negotiate with people all the time who are not terribly trustworthy. Um, that's why, you know, Ronald Reagan always said trust but verify, which I think was wrong. Let's just verify. Um, trust uh, is a very difficult thing. And obviously, Russia has proven itself untrustworthy. But they have consistently reduced their nuclear weapons arsenal as a result of treaties that were first negotiated by Ronald Reagan um, and many others. They have also worked cooperatively with us to contain nuclear material, which has been enormously important. That's a huge terrorist threat. If they were to ever get their hands on nuclear material, and outside of the United States, the former Soviet Union and now Russia is the number one place where you have that nuclear material. So having some measure of cooperation with them to contain and reduce that material is enormously important. That's the goal of the START Treaty. So it's not a matter of whether or not you trust Putin or trust Russia. Now, I don't trust many people, just in general, um, and I certainly don't trust them. The question is, is the START Treaty is an effort to reduce the number of nuclear weapons that Russia has and to contain and control the fissile material that they have? Is that in our best interest? It is, and we should negotiate that. Now, certainly, what Putin is doing in the Ukraine is reprehensible and violates all manner of treaties, and I support the President and others' efforts um, to condemn and sanction them as a result. But to walk away from an effort to contain nuclear weapons, I don't believe is in the U.S. best interest. It's not a matter of whether or not you trust Russia. It's a matter of what's in our best interest. I believe it's in our best interest to continue to try to contain the amount of nuclear and fissile material that is available out there in the world starts one way to do that. Walking away from this just because we don't trust Putin and we don't is not sound policy, and I urge opposition to this amendment. Gentleman from Washington reserves the balance of his time. Gentleman from Colorado is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I I want to respond to my colleague by saying there is a flaw in the New START Treaty, in my opinion, in that it originally called for reductions in U.S. nuclear forces and allowed Russia to increase its nuclear forces. So that right there, I think, is a problem. But when you have serial violations by the Russian Federation 
uh, invading Ukraine in, in violation of the 1994 Budapest Memorandum, the INF Treaty, the CFE Treaty. They are not a reliable partner in these treaties. And so to reduce our forces, how can that be in our interest when the other party to the treaty is not uh, someone who, who is performing on these other treaties? And there could be questions on whether they're even fully complying with the New START Treaty. But when it comes to the INF Treaty, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that it be entered into the record without objection an article from the New York Times dated January 29th of this year detailing some of their violations of the INF Treaty. Request will be covered under general leave. Thank you. At this point, I would like to yield one minute to my colleague, the gentleman from Utah, Mr. Bishop. One minute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I am pleased to join uh, my friend from Colorado on this particular issue. When you have uh, a partner, which is Russia, who is already engaged in a cyber attack against Estonia, they have invaded and declared independent the two northern provinces of Georgia. And they also have done everything we know well about in the Ukraine right now. And in addition, have violated the existing INF treaty. And we can talk about that classified material because it was quoted on the front page of the New York Times. They have violated that. It is in the best interest of the United States to wait until we have a more profitable, reliable partner before launching into another endeavor. And with that, I actually support this amendment. I think it's well-timed, well well-placed, and I will yield back my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Colorado Reserves. The gentleman from Washington is recognized. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I yield myself one and a half minutes. The gentleman is recognized for one and a half minutes. First of all, just for everybody's information, you cannot actually reveal classified information, even if it has showed up in the newspaper, because then you're confirming it, so you're not supposed to do that. Um, second of all, if you don't like the START Treaty, that's, that's one thing. We, we can have that debate. We had that debate in the Senate, and a bipartisan group of senators confirmed the treaty and, and passed it. I mean, that's a separate debate. If you're simply trying to reopen that, that is something that the Senate has already determined. And again, it's not a matter of Russia being trustworthy. Um, I don't think of them as a partner. Um, I think of them as a reality that we have to deal with. In the one area where they have been fairly consistent, again, starting with the treaties that were negotiated with under Ronald Reagan, is they have reduced their nuclear forces and worked with us to contain their fissile material um, after the breakup of the Soviet Union. This has reduced the amount of nuclear weapons in the world, uh, which is a positive step. So again, it's yes, what they're doing in Ukraine, a whole lot of it, we ought to oppose that. But when it comes to trying to contain nuclear material for the protection of both of our countries and the world, um, that's not something that I think we should walk away from. I'm sure there are, there are other opportunities, other ways that we can punish Russia for their misdeeds um, that would make a great deal more sense. This hurts us. It does not help us. And again, I urge opposition to the amendment. The gentleman reserves the balance of his time. The gentleman from Colorado is recognized. How much time is remaining, Mr. Chairman? The gentleman from Colorado has... One minute remaining. Gentleman from Washington has a minute. a minute and a half remaining. I reserve at this time. Gentleman from Colorado reserves. Gentleman from Washington is recognized. He, he has the right to close. Is that correct? Gentleman from Washington has the right to close. Okay. Sorry. Then I, I'll, re I'll reserve my time. I'm just, so I'm just going to close at this point. Gentleman from Washington uh, reserves. Gentleman from Colorado. Mr. Chairman. I can't see how it would be in our interest to keep complying with a treaty when the other party to that treaty is not in compliance with so many other things it's supposed to be doing. This amendment merely calls for a halt in the spending of compliance until such time as they come into compliance with all of these other treaties. We're talking about reducing our nuclear forces. That is a guarantee against the main and only existential threat against the United States, a devastating nuclear attack, God forbid. But why in the world would we want to give up further nuclear forces when the party that's supposed to be working with us on this is not reliable? I do not understand that. I would ask adoption of this amendment, and Mr. Chairman, at this point, I yield back. The gentleman from Colorado yields back.